So today I'm not going to be doing demo of this tutorial in Gunpaste. In fact, I'm not even going to do it in cold porcelain. So what am I going to do? I hear you ask. Well, someone very kindly uh, let me use some potato paste. Um, so different polymer clay and this is what I'm going to be using. It's very similar to cold porcelain and the way you handle it. So I am going to be uh, using the stuff I use for cold porcelain, using techniques um, I use for gum paste as it's my original medium. So had I been using gum paste here, I would be just rolling it on a green board, but since polymer clays tend to be stickier, I use this little sleeve I got in Ryman's. Now, uh, this is quite a basic technique here. I roll it out thicker at the top and thin at the bottom, and it works, it does work for leaves. Admittedly, it's quite a basic technique and there are ways to make it uh, more elegantly. For example, you could do, you could leave a thicker area in the middle of your shape and then thin down both sides uh, to kind of uh, leave a groove or you could just use a groove board. But I'm trying to um, include a lot in my videos. I'm trying to cover a lot of what I see very little of, of on internet and so not to make my videos too bulky I tend to leave out some of the bits uh, you could hopefully find in many other places now I'm quite happy to make my videos very very long but if I look at statistics I see that I just bore people to death and so when they drop out YouTube hates me and YouTube doesn't bump up my videos and doesn't doesn't love my channel doesn't suggest my videos to for other people to see so no one knows that I'm there and my channel doesn't grow so I just thought I'd kind of give you some of the reasons of what's going on so anyway my less than delicate um, uh, wiring here and with polymer clay with uh, cold porcelain etc it's very easy to wire because it's so sticky and just kind of grabs um, grabs the wire. Uh, with gum paste you need to be more careful with your grooving. If you seen uh, the picture in the beginning of the finished ivy you would have seen a nice finish that you could achieve with clay uh, on all the joints and little stems and I'm going to show you later on in the video how to do it. I just love that uh, wonderful extras that uh, clay offers really. Now when you lift up a leaf like this always do it from the end not from the beginning because it disturbs the pattern less. Um, so here I'm going to do share with you how I am achieving that lovely very typical ivy look and I've tried so many different things. Ivy is a bit tricky like this. So edible paints uh, non-edible material and this is what I do and it looks horrendous initially uh, and why am I using my fingers well uh, as you will see uh, later you could also use a brush so don't rush into dirty your fingers if you hate the idea of it but I uh, to me hands they like a particularly intuitive and wonderful tool that could get involved in any arts and kind of better it I believe uh, not just arts but uh, being an artist this is kind of um, my perspective on it so you could do loads of lovely things with hands a lot quicker and a lot um, and a lot nicer in some on some occasions so this is what I'm using by the way use a bit of paper to, uh, for underneath of the leaf not to dirty it but obviously the disadvantage of using your fingers is that uh, when you come out it doesn't wash off very quickly and then you talk to your neighbor the next day and you know you realize that all they've been doing is staring at your hands they don't even look at you they just wonder what you've been up to but they don't ask so anyway so with paints very nicely you could just really really reach a nice gradation very very easily I mean to me uh, I was amazed how nicely the gradation looked for the very little effort I was putting in and it's like second time I'm doing ivy as well using this method so beautiful very nice um, method and uh, for uh, polymer clay you're meant to be using oil paints however I have a 
quite a lot, quite, quite a range of edible paints and hardly any oil paints and plus I'm a little bit scared of oil paints still so I'm kind of cheating and also with oil uh, it, it would probably ruin my hands even worse now here I'm using uh, like a tissue to just wipe the back of that leaf that I didn't look after properly and this is the gum paste itself and in with the penny in with the pound I'm gonna continue using my hands and on this side I'm going to try and use the brush and actually it works quite well anyway so perhaps I should have used the brush to start with anyway so the back of this plant as you would be able to see uh, a little bit later in production process uh, I kind of tried different different parts and patterns on the back and this is my favorite very very light pattern but you have to do some kind of a pattern to kind of emphasize the beautiful lovely texture otherwise it's just going to be a waste isn't it and so this is what i've ended up with and now i'm going to show you how i do my uh, the finish of the little stems that small detail that uh, sometimes makes a lot of difference and of course it doesn't actually happen to me any anywhere near as often as I thought it would but I forgot to switch on my camera so now I've just found some leftovers of paste and leaves and I'm going to show you how to do the stems now it's basically twiddling and I'm not very good at twiddling at all but I am getting better at it so if you do it you know uh, try to do your best uh, but don't be too hard on yourself and try to connect uh, keep to the natural shape of wider at the top and maybe less wide at the bottom or whatever it happens to be in nature and um, also uh, with gum paste this just won't work uh, water, finishing it off with water by the way so with gum paste it won't work with polymer clay it works beautifully and this is how you can cut it down if you find that your um, finished bit is a bit too long to put it on a stem and um, yeah so now i'm going to assemble it together and before i forget before you do this twiddling always make sure that your wires are covered uh, with tape but try not to put too much tape not to make them too bulky as i said uh, twiddling does take a bit of practice if you haven't done it before some of you uh, probably would be amazing twiddlers because that was meant to be kind of skill that some people got taught to do but I am self-taught, so I kind of just um, played by ear, you know, feel my way through, and I quite enjoy it that way. So now I'm going to try plant plastering. Uh, I used to dilute my fondant like this to kind of uh, mend the blemishes on cakes when I used to make them. Once I even done a hole in a ready cake and kind of fixed it using this method. And here I'm using it with my um, with my cold porcelain. It's actually cold porcelain, not potato clay. This one I'm using in the middle, and um, it works pretty nicely. Uh, this kind of thickish mass just sticks to it really really well so maybe a perfect twiddling would have worked better here but it's not bad and I think this as other people other polymer clay artists use this technique as well I can't readily place it where I'd seen it exactly but um, anyway it just kind of makes sense uh, to use it and I am very very excited because although I do love the whole small detail I'm not gonna lie I do feel resentful spending like a good hour doing something that many people would probably not even notice so here I'm going to um, try to give it a natural finish so I'm adding a bit of white um, I thought I might need brown but now I don't so I've um, given it a white mist and here I'm just using a bit of water someone just asked me on Facebook the other day how do I keep it all in place all the colors etc and the truthful answer is I don't know the fantastic solution uh, that would help people in UK especially because the glaze that keeps it all together is only sold it seems outside UK so a specific glaze 
you can steam it it does help a bit but it's not ideal and here I'm just using nail varnish uh, as little as I can for subtle effect obviously you can't use it for everything obviously if you work in sugar you would not be having this problem would you so just use uh, your glaze I would dilute it uh, half half with pure spirit vodka uh, vodka doesn't respond to glaze very well and just give it one layer and if I want it to be and if I wanted it to be shiny I'd give it another layer and at this is this uh, tutorial is coming to an end. As usual, I will see you next Thursday again with a new flower tutorial and have a particularly special weekend.